Hi everyone, I'm Rhys coming at you from the Barbican Theatre to give you a Barbican Young Reviewers Review. Now today I'm going to be talking about a show I saw on Tuesday night in the pit called Tabletop Shakespeare by Force Entertainment. Now stop, I already know what you're thinking. Tabletop Shakespeare. Is this where actors perform shortened versions of Shakespearean plays on top of a comically small table, forcing the actors to think more about their balance than their lines? Well, you are incorrect. In reality, it's something way more simpler than that. Basically, a performer sits down at a table and gives you an hour-long summary of a Shakespearean play whilst using inanimate objects to play the characters. I'm serious. That was the show. I literally travelled into Barbican to see Romeo and Juliet being played by a torch and a jar of lemon jam respectively and King John being played by a potato beater. I'm serious, that was the show. It, it, it was like, it's like a funnel version of reading the synopsis on the Wikipedia entries, you know, and funny enough, <laughs> I loved it. It's completely stripped back. There's no stage, no fancy lights, there's not even actors, really. I mean, as you walk in, you're greeted by the performer storyteller, as I should really be calling them, smiling at you as they enter, as if there's some kind of English professor waiting to give their morning lecture. I mean, they even had that frustrated smile thing down. You know when they give that smile to the kids who come in just in the nick of time, it's like, oh, you... Mm. I mean, we've all been on the wrong side of those stairs, right? Gosh, it was like being dragged back into university after having just escaped last year. I mean, um, graduated. Graduated. Anyway, the next hour is literally spent with us watching this person sit at a table and tell us this story whilst using alcohol bottles and kitchen appliances as props. And we were silent. Like, you could hear the tiniest pin drop. And as I'm watching this, I couldn't help but liken these performers to, to ch young children in their rooms playing with their action figures and dolls. Hashtag Toy Story Wave. But instead of it being Andy, it's this mature young, this mature woman and, you know, a jar of cinnamon. It reminded me of how fun that kind of play used to be, you know, sitting there building out an imaginary town out of Lego to be destroyed by Dr. X and rescued by Action Man. Like, I nearly went home with the intent of looking for my Action Man. I was that inspired. But what was also interesting was how quickly I came to accept these characters and identify these characters as the objects. Yeah, I mean, one, the first minute that the woman introduced King John to us as a potato beater, where everyone's in the in theatres chuckling and laughing to themselves, because we're sitting there thinking, oh, come on, this is ridiculous. If you're going to do King John, at least choose up like a crown to represent him. How am I supposed to believe that this kitchen tool is a king? But then five minutes go by, and it becomes nothing else. It is the King of England. I even started picturing a tiny little crown above its head. I, and I think that was the point of the director, to force us to use our imaginations. You know, in a world where we've become so spoiled by CGI and amazing theatrics, we forget that we have that ability in ourselves. And I think that's the point of why he didn't even use humanoid objects to portray the characters. It was for us to have our imaginations become the driving force of this play. And it was even a part during Romeo and Juliet where I started getting really excited because I wanted to know what item was going to play Juliet. Yet. I mean, I get that excited when I'm watching an actual production of Romeo and Juliet and I want to know what actress is going to play her. And hilariously enough, I found myself disappointed when I saw it was this jar of, of lemon jam. I was sitting there thinking, come on, you could have chosen something a bit sexier to play Juliet. Like, I don't know, a perfume bottle. I mean, have you seen those Chanel perfume bottles? That literally became my mode of thinking. Like someone who's disappointed when a character that they love is being played by an actor they don't think is right for the role. And the story wasn't hindered because of it. I was still sucked in to the unrequited love of the two Starcross lovers, and I was still shocked and disgusted at the tyranny of King John the Potato Beater. You know, and that credit has to lie with the performers. They really knew their stories. I'm not even sure if there was a script. I mean, they didn't say it in any fancy way. They didn't use any Shakespearean language. They just told it like it is. Their voices were clear, concise. The tone was soft and beautiful, like a mother telling me a bedtime story. I mean, it's the kind of thing I imagine a Shakespearean parent would do if they found out their kid didn't know about Romeo and Juliet. You know, the mother would be like, oh, Timmy, you never heard of Romeo and Juliet? Well, pass, pass me the rolling pin, the towel, and the kettle. It's going to be fun. Honestly, I was really impressed with tabletop Shakespeare. I mean, it's such, I think it's such a clever, affordable, and simple method. I mean, anyone could do it. All you would need is a charismatic individual, a table, and a few miscellaneous items, and you've got a show. I mean, I'd honestly be surprised if this idea didn't catch on. I mean, in fact, I hope it catches on, because I can't think of a better way to introduce Shakespeare to those new to it. Ah, it's the kind of concept I can see being adopted in the classrooms. I mean, it costs nothing. You have all the props you'll ever need. And maybe that was the point of this show, to, to show us that there are cheap, interesting ways of introducing young people to Shakespeare, and if so, well done, you have succeeded. 
But you know what, even, I reckon even veterans would enjoy this novelty way that the show's performed. I mean, I know all about Romeo and Juliet and I still love the show. Plus, they're doing the complete works of Shakespeare. So it's a great chance for anyone who's interested in the bar but might feel that they're intimidated by the language that's used in some of the plays. And so I think this is a great stepping stone for them before they actually go and see those plays. I, for one, had never heard of King John, but after seeing this, I know I can definitely now go to an actual production and really enjoy it. And sure, it's not as cheap as, say, reading the Wikipedia entries, but you certainly won't come out of there missing your money. Oh yeah, and the cast, I almost forgot. Fantastic, particular Romeo and Juliet. I mean, the torch playing Romeo really brightened up every scene and the lemon jam jar Juliet was wonderful. If not, maybe a little, Sour, in some instances. Oh, come on! Do you have any idea how many puns I had in my head? You're lucky I just chose two. Anyway, guys, I have been Reese, and this has been your Barbican Young Reviews review of Tabletop Shakespeare. Great show, cool concept, really educational, highly recommend it. See you later!